Come on, that ought to be, somebody should have shouted right there. Because look, see, we don't shout because we don't want folk to know what we going through. But sometimes I need to let you know what I'm going through. Because you may be the one that has the anointing to pray for me that I might get my breakthrough. So I'm going to say it one more time. I believe God is healing families in this house. Hallelujah. See, I need a healing in my family. I got an older son, and him and I haven't really connected yet. We bear the same name. Amen. Amen. So again, we welcome you. Amen. I was looking for a scripture. This is my first time doing this. Y'all pray for me. Amen. I probably should have let somebody else do it, but they told me to do it, so I'm going to be obedient. Amen. Submission without subjection. Submission is just submission. Amen. There's a blessing in obedience. Just do what God tells you to do. He'll bless you. Amen. Every prophetic manifestation. I ain't just want to teach just for a moment and to welcome. Every prophetic manifestation. The prerequisite was the prophetic instruction. If you do this, I will do that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But as for me, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust confidently in the loving kindness of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because God, you have done it. You have rescued me and kept me safe. I will wait on your name for it is good in the presence of of your godly ones. Amen. Father, we thank you. We love you. We honor you this morning, sir. Father God, we we just, we, there are no words to adequately describe just how awesome and amazing you are towards us, so God. Father God, this morning, we thank you that you have done it. You have rescued us. You have saved us. And you continue to watch over. Father, you are perfecting those things which concerneth us. You never sleep nor slumber watching over us. You are always there at work in, through, and for us. We bless you, we love you, and we honor you, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there. He's worthy. Amen. Just a couple of things that you'll see happening. During the service, you'll see some sons and daughters come down. They'll just be, and they'll sow a seed on the altar, and they'll go back to their seats. That's just saying that I'm sowing into the word that I just heard in my life. Amen. How many know you can sow where you want to go? Hallelujah. I like this side over here. This side over here going to manifest. Amen. You can sow where you want to go. The only spirit that breaks the spirit of poverty and lack is the spirit of generosity. Give and it shall be given unto you. Hold on and it'll be held back from you. Amen. Amen. So God bless you this morning. We love you. We praise you. Ah, thank you again. You, you know what? If y'all see what I see, y'all are beautiful. Man, give yourselves a hand. Celebrate yourself this morning. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord on this morning? Hallelujah. 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 I just heard a song in my spirit, and it says, I really love the Lord. So I want you to make it personal this morning and tell the Lord how much you love him. Amen. Hallelujah. I really love the Lord I
Come on, put your hands together for God. Hallelujah. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Hallelujah. Celebrate the Lord with us. Hallelujah. You are not here on your own choice. You're not here by your own choosing. You may have woke up this morning and thought this is where you wanted to go, but this is where the Lord had planned for you to be. So you ought to celebrate for him thinking of you, for him considering you. Hallelujah. For him to give you breath in your body. Inhale and exhale that ought to be a reason enough for you to magnify that ought to be reason enough for you to praise him if you could put your hands together you should celebrate him because he gave you full movement of your body hallelujah if you could jump up and down you ought to give him glory because there's life in your body give him praise give him honor magnify him lift him up he's worthy he's honorable he's awesome he's omnipotent he has all power in his hands he omniscient he knows everything his wisdom is beyond it's too vast for us to contain it. Hallelujah. He's Jehovah Jireh, a provider. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. Bless his name in here today. I don't know what you might need. I don't know what you have desire of, but if you need God, hallelujah, I dare you to celebrate him right now. If you need God to move on your life, I dare you to give him praise. Don't worry about your circumstances. Don't be concerned about your condition. Magnify God. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that he inhabits the praise of Israel, that translation of Israel being people, which means us, we inhabit, he inhabits our praise when we magnify him. So when you need God to step into your situation, just praise him. When you need God to move in your life, just magnify him. Somebody ought to shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's heavy this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, it's heavy right now, hallelujah, glory to his name, hallelujah, but he's a break, he's, a, he's the breaker, hallelujah, we can invoke the spirit of the breaker in this house this morning, hallelujah, breaking up all your problems, breaking up the fallow grounds of your life, breaking up your troubles, breaking up those things that distract you, hallelujah, come on, magnify the Lord with me, hallelujah, 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 it's a push this morning to praise him, hallelujah, I don't know what's going on in your life, but it's praise that's going to break you out of it hallelujah remember when Paul and Silas were in prison they praised and sang praises unto God and the Bible tells us that immediately their bands were loose the doors of the prison house was open so whatever you find yourself confide in open up your mouth and give him praise and watch God open up the door watch God make a way out of nowhere watch God be the deliverer that he is somebody ought to get excited about God this morning and give him praise Hallelujah. He's awesome. 
Hallelujah. He's awesome. Standing for announcements this morning. The Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. Amen. Text alert system. Hallelujah. If you didn't receive a message on Thursday on, or on Saturday, hallelujah, then there may be something going on. There may be a, a glitch in the subscription. So please resubscribe. Send the text to number 71441. Type in the P-H-D-I-M and follow the prompts that you'll be uh, get the alerts and get the text and get the news and information that we send because a lot of information goes out on that 71441 call. Amen. Join us every Thursday for Noonday Bible Study. Hallelujah with our own pastor, Ken Moss. Amen. If you're in, for sit in the vicinity, you're taking a lunch break. If you're off that day, you just don't, uh, I ain't got nothing going. Hallelujah. Not that anything should supersede the word of God, but if you're just not busy that day and you need a refreshment, please come on that Thursday morning at noon. Hallelujah. Get refreshed in the word. Hallelujah. Amen. If you haven't done it already, if you haven't sown your sacrificial seed, amen, hallelujah, we're asking that you do so, amen. See Elder Alonzo Lattimore, amen, hallelujah, and so it, hallelujah, is to help uh, uh, with maintenance and things around going on at the church that, that need to be done, amen, hallelujah. There was a special fireside chat this past Friday, and we were asking ministers and those that were able to sow a seed into our bishop. So if you haven't been able to do that as well, go ahead. It's a $25 seed. Listen, we sow where we want to grow. We sow where we want to go. And if you believe in if you believed in the bishop when he was here, amen. Hallelujah. If you said he was your spiritual father, then there would be no reason why you wouldn't want to sow into his life. Amen. Because remember, the oil flows from the head down. Hallelujah. So when you sow, you make a connection with him. Amen. Amen. He's not asking. This is just what we're doing. Amen. So if you still need to sow, amen, again, give that to Elder Lattimore as well. Are you excited about the upcoming new year? Hallelujah. Are you believing God for a phenomenal 2019? Hallelujah. Have you had a frustrating 2018? Hallelujah. You've been through hell and back, but God has still kept you alive. But you were believing that your 2019 is going to be greater. Hallelujah. It's going to be one of the best years you've ever experienced on this side of heaven. Amen. If you believe so, then you ought to be here on Tuesday night. I mean, on Monday night, the 31st at 10 p.m. We're going into war. So bring your weapon of warfare. Bring your praise. Bring your adoration. Bring your seed. Bring your cards. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get ready to celebrate God as we go into this new year, driven into destiny, believing God for a new thing to take place in our lives. Listen, God is not going to necessarily do something new per se as make a, 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 something new out of you, but he's going to take what he's placed in you. Hallelujah. Because there's some stuff in you that you don't even know is in you and God's going to bring it to the surface so that you and the us is going to look brand new. But God has already placed it in you. He's just waiting for the right time, the right moment to bring it out. In 2019, for some of you, it's going to be a year where God elevates some things in your life where God releases some stuff that's been held back so long. You, you might have been through something uh, in 2018 and it was preparation. It was seed sown. Harvest is coming. Hallelujah. So be here at 10 p.m. Potter South Dayton International Ministries. Invite family and friends, church to none, church to life. Hallelujah. Let's start our new year off right by ending it, hallelujah, with the Lord. Ending our old year with the Lord and starting our new year with Christ. Now listen, we do bring, uh, we get two index cards. Your first card, on one card you put everything that you want to throw away. Your hurts, your pains, your disappointments, your problems, those things, your habits, the things that you can't break, those things that you need to shake, that you want God to get rid of out of your life. Fill that out on one card. At a certain point in the service, we're going to throw that in the trash can. That symbolizes that, God, you're taking this thing out of my life. Hallelujah. It may be some people, it may be some places, it may be some things, it may be some activities. Hallelujah. That you know is not conducive to where God is trying to get you to go. So write those things down and put it on that card. Your second index card, you're going to write uh, uh, your vision, your hopes, your dream, what you believe God is going to do for you in this upcoming season, in this upcoming New Year's, those things that you want to see God do in your life. Write those things down on that second index card. That second index card at the appropriate time, hallelujah, will be laid on the altar and we will be praying over those cards for the whole year, amen, believing with you, in agreement with you for the will of God to take place in your life, amen. Also, bring a seed. Hallelujah. Your last seed for 2018, 
So, amen, and thank God for all that he's done through the year. Amen, hallelujah. And then bring a fresh start seed, amen, that seed that you're going to plant, believe me. God, this thing is going to reap a harvest in 2019. I'm just believing you to do the phenomenal, the awesome, the un impossible, the unachievable, the unbelievable thing in my life. Everything that everybody said I couldn't be, you're going to make it happen, hallelujah. We're going to prove our detractors wrong. We're going to prove our haters wrong on this one, God, because we're believing you to make a move, amen. Amen. So that's uh, Monday, December the 31st, 10 p.m. Be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Continue to pray for our sick and shuttered and bereaved families. Amen. Please get with uh, Elder Moss if you have anyone. I mean, I'm sorry, not Elder. I'm Elder Alano, not Pastor Moss. No, please don't, please don't send him with that, even though he'll receive it. But uh, we don't want to put more on him. Amen. He has a lot on his plate. Amen. So see one of the elders. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Minister LJ, you can give her that information so that we can continue to pray. Hallelujah. Minister Chelsea, she's on uh, uh, the prayer team. Amen. Hallelujah. The intercessory prayer team. So we can pray and keep those people lifted up. Amen. Any birthdays or anniversaries? Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate the woman of God. Hallelujah. Dr. Beverly Daniels, Chief Elder. Hallelujah. Glory. Give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Hallelujah. For the woman of God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. It's phenomenal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's a survivor. God has been with her. Hallelujah. Listen, I know we don't do this at this time, and I'm not telling you to do this at this time, but I will behoove you to shake her hand, give her a hug, sow a seed, because you want what's on her life to touch your life. Amen. Hallelujah. God has truly blessed this woman of God. He has been a blessing. She, he has been awesome to her. Amen. She's been here. Even when she was going through what she was going through, she was still here with a smile on her face. She still had a word to encourage. So let's thank God for her life. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you want the wisdom that God has put on her? Don't you want that on your life? The longevity that God has given her? Don't you want that on her life? Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate God for her. Celebrate for what he's done for her. Celebrate how he made a way for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are grateful for this woman of God, this mother of the house, this chief elder. Hallelujah. This wealth of wisdom, this wealth, hallelujah, of the anointing that God has placed on our life. We're grateful, amen, to have her here and to celebrate with her today. Amen. Hallelujah. It's her birthday. Yes. 80. 80. 80. The big A. Hallelujah. 80. New year, new beginning, multiplied. Hallelujah. Glory. 80 looking like she's 25. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Amen. So at this time, greet each other with the holy kiss. Let them know that we're one word away. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise right there. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Amen. We give him praise. And we simply say he's able this morning. Hallelujah. She won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, 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 oh. he's able. Yeah, yeah, God is able. God is able to do just what He said He would do. It's gonna be. Up on God, she won't, he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, he's able. 
he's able. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill. Every promise. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't. Cause he won't give up yeah. on God. He's able. He's able. Oh, 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 yeah. He's, He's able. able. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands if he's able. Oh, He's able. 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 Cause he won't give up on you. Help me say that. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Everybody say, don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Say it again. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Oh, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Come on, clap your hands right there and give God some praise. Hallelujah. I hear crying to the spirit. Oh, 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 he's able. Come on, help us say that. Oh, 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 o
Cause he won't give up on you. Help me say it. Don't, Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there. Come on and testify of his goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise right there. If he's been good to you, if he's made a way, I dare you to magnify him right there. Is there anybody in the place to say that can say he's able? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's an able God. Hallelujah. He's able to do exceedingly, oh, yeah. abundantly above all we can ask or yeah. think. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's able. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. We give God glory. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for rather for the praise and worship. Hallelujah. And our sacred dancers this morning. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the anointing of God on their life. Amen. We bless God for you. We thank God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I remember when they said, Glory, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. The last Sunday of 2018. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, I don't know what you do. Look here. Tell the enemy you made it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We made it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I am excited, amen, about what God has done and what God is going to do, amen, in your life. Amen. Glory to God. I'm expecting great things, hallelujah, in the blessed name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Stand with me. Amen. We want to do make a few declarations. Amen. We want to give honor. Amen. Where honor is due. We want to first say welcome. Amen. To all of you to the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. I know our elders have done a fine job. Amen. Of making you feel welcome. But we want to thank God for you. And we're glad that you're here with us on today. Hallelujah. We thank God for all of our new members. Amen. That are here today. Amen. All the new guests. Amen. That are visiting for the first time. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen. And we bless God for your life. We're believing, amen, hallelujah, there's something great, hallelujah, is going to be said today, amen, that God's going to move in a special way, amen, and your life is going to be blessed and changed by the power of the Lord God, hallelujah, can you say amen, hallelujah, this morning we want to give honor, amen, to our, my spiritual father, our spiritual father, many of us here, amen, Dr. Bishop Mark C. McGuire Sr., amen, down in Jacksonville, Florida, hallelujah, Lady Narlene and Bishop Bon McLaughlin, amen, our grandparents in the Lord, amen. Let's give God praise for their life, hallelujah, and thank God for their ministry and for their covering, amen, of this house here in Dayton, Ohio. We thank God for you, Bishop. We love you, sir. It was always good to have you. We had a wonderful time with you in the Lord, hallelujah, and you poured into us, and we're going to share that, amen, with our friends on today, amen. We're thankful for that. We want to give God glory, amen, for my lovely wife, amen, Sister Isabel Moss, amen, is in the house. We bless God for you, Lady Moss, hallelujah. We thank God for you, amen. Hallelujah. God says give honor where honor is due. We thank God for Chief Elder Doc Bev. Glory to God. Amen. 80 years old. Glory to God. 80 years young. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is doing great things. We thank God for you, uh, Doc Bev. We thank God for the anointing of God on your life. Amen. And I'm praying and hoping that some of our young people and some of the ladies in, uh, here in this house today, amen, will come up and touch you, amen, and allow the anointing of God, glory to God, to fall on their life, amen. There is an anointing of God on this blessed woman of God, amen. If you have not got to meet Doc Bev, make it your point, amen, to touch base with her on today, glory to God, that God might bless your life. Can you say amen? Now, come on, come on. We want to thank God for all of our elders, all of our ministers, all of our executive administration, all of our greeters, all of our deacons. We want to thank God for all of those, our young people, the youth ministry, glory to God, for all of our young people. Didn't they bless us on last Sunday, amen, when they blessed the Lord, glory to God. We thank God for our young people and all of our youth leaders back there in the back. We love you. We thank God for you. God is doing some great things in and through your life. 
and help me uh, worship and celebrate the Lord for your life. Come on, Holy Ghost, your life, amen. You've been a blessed person in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, you've been through hell and high water all through the year, glory to God. And guess what, my friend? We made it to the end of the year. Give God glory! Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for your life. Amen. Your life is valuable to us. We thank God to you for you. Amen. And we're so glad that you've chosen to join us here on today. Take your Bibles. Amen. Wherever you're reading from tonight. I mean, this morning. Amen. Your iPads. Amen. Your notebooks or note tablets. Hallelujah. We're going to ask that you hold them up high. We want to do our biblical declaration. Amen. Here at the Potter's House. We want to make it known. Amen. To the enemy. Amen. And to everyone. Glory to God. That we love the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's on the screen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we don't have it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, I wish y'all praise God anyhow. Amen. Bless the Lord. Come on, just raise it up anyway. We're just going to do the best we can. We're going to make our own declaration this morning in the blessed name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Follow to me. I am kingdom connected. I am chasing after the heart of God. I am determined to manifest in 2019. I am born again. I am a child of God. I am on fire for God. I will deliver. I will set free according to the word of God. I will give him glory. I will give him praise. I will give him my life in the blessed name of Jesus. Now, if you believe that, give God a real praise. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Make your own declaration unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Make your own declaration unto the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We will be a house of prayer this year. We will, glory to God, manifest. We will be determined in Jesus' name. We will come out in the blessed name of Jesus. We will get through it in the mighty name of God. In the name of Jesus, I will live and not die, glory to God. Somebody ought to give God praise. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. The devil should have killed me a long time ago. Hallelujah. I mean to tell you, amen. He allowed me to see another year. He allowed me to get to the end of this year. Glory to God. I'm going to give God praise. I'm going to lift his name up. I'm going to glorify him. Glory to God. Because God been too good to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God be good, amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can, amen. I dare you, amen, just continue to praise him. Hallelujah. I was told when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Glory to God. You can't praise him enough, glory to God. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in the house that needs to be blessed today? Is there anybody in the house needing a miracle today? Glory to God. All you got to do is give God praise. Hallelujah. Ah. Uh, uh-huh. My Lord, I don't know about you, glory to God. <laughs> Amen. But I ain't going out sitting down, hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to praise my way into 2019. I'm going to glorify him. Amen. I'm going to glorify him every breath I take. I'm going to glorify him every step I make. I'm determined, hallelujah. I'm going to live for God, and I'm going to stay kingdom connected, glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a word from the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, y'all might <laughs> look here. Y'all better get used to it. Amen. Because I, I heard amen up in glory. All they do is glorify him all day long. I heard up in glory. All they doing is saying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. Y'all might as well get used to it down here. Glory to God. Because if you're planning to go to heaven, hallelujah, you're going to praise him all day long. Hallelujah. Every tongue will confess and every knee going to bow and acknowledge that he is Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. I'm just getting practice. I'm just getting, I'm getting worked up. I'm getting ready to go. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't planning to stay here forever. 
No, no, I, look at, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the master face to face. Amen. Hallelujah. And so every opportunity we get, amen, to get to this time in our life, amen, this is a blessing from the Lord. There's some folk, amen, that didn't wake up on this morning. There's some folk, amen, had it in their mind on January the 1st of 2018 that they were going to be standing here, hallelujah, in 2018 at the end of the year, hallelujah, but they're not here with us, glory to God, hallelujah, but hey, guess what? You are here, hallelujah. God still got a use for you. God still got a plan for your life. You ought to give God glory, hallelujah. Yeah, you're still here, amen, able to see your children grow. And that crazy, amen, come on, Holy Ghost. You're still here, amen, able to see them running around, glory to God, and hallelujah, and growing up to be young men and young women. You're still able to see, hallelujah, God doing great things, amen, hallelujah, turning people's lives around, making differences, hallelujah, in people's lives, having impact, hallelujah, where we thought there wasn't going to be no impact, hallelujah. We're still able seeing God, hallelujah, doing some great things over here in this community, this 417 area. God is still doing great things, glory to God. And I'm grateful that he's allowed us to be here. Hallelujah. To see God continue to do his finished work. Ah, oh, my God. I'm so thankful I get a chance to see your lovely face this morning. I'm so thankful, amen, that God woke you up this morning, amen. He touched you, amen, and said, hey, man, I got use for you, amen. I'm so thankful, hallelujah, that you had a mind to get up and come into the house of the Lord. How many of you know we ain't always had that mindset? Come on, Holy Ghost. We ain't always wanted to get up, hey, amen, after being out all night, Saturday night, hallelujah, and getting up on Sunday morning. It's like, go, go where? <laughs> A bedside Baptist, say, glory to God. How many of y'all have been to bedside Baptist? Come on, I, didn't, I know a whole lot of us have been there now. My mama used to tell me young years ago, well, I don't know what church you're going to, but we don't blow the bedside Baptist. You need to get up on the morning. We're going to church. Glory to God. Amen. But I'm so glad that she brought me to church. So glad, amen, that the word is covering me even in my foolishness. Come on, Holy God. So glad, Dr. Bev, amen, that when I didn't have Hallelujah. Uh, 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 my conscience or my mind stayed on the Lord. He had his mind stayed on me. Hallelujah. And so he's allowed us to be here this morning, and we just want to give God glory uh, for the end of 2018. We're excited about tomorrow night's New Year's Eve service. We want to invite you to come out and invite your family to come. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. If you got any uh, camouflage uh, gear, amen, wear your camouflage. Hallelujah, because I promise you, amen, in 2019, we going in the battle. Come on, Holy Ghost. Amen, we going in the battle, amen. Hallelujah, we ain't, look here, we ain't going in sitting down. Look here, we're not going in, amen, like we went in this year, amen. We're not going in, amen, hallelujah, we're wondering God might do something. We going in expecting God to move. Come on, Holy Ghost. So turn with me, if you will, amen, to Nehemiah chapter 2. I'm going to look at verse 1 through 20. I'm going to read through it, amen, and we're going to try to get through this as best we can, amen, and I'm going to give you what I believe God has given me for the house this morning. We're going to shout and we're going to love on the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're going to have a great time in his presence. Can you say it? Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 2, according to the NIV, in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? That might be a good question to ask your neighbor this morning. Come on, hold on. 
<laughs> this can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever? Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruin and its gates have been destroyed by fire? King said to me, what is it you want? I hear God asking you that question this morning. What is it, amen, that you want the master to do for you, amen, in this 2019? Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king, if it please favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked me, how long will your journey take? And when will you get back? And it pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. And I also said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of Trans Euphrates, so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted me my request. Come on, Holy Ghost. I'm gonna pause just right there, amen. Because the gracious hand of God is upon you. That's why you ought to make your request known unto the Lord. Amen. Because the gracious hand of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. God wants to grant you your request. So I went to the governors of Trans Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. And the king had also sent army of officers and cavalry with me. God always got a backup plan. You ain't never in this thing by yourself. God gonna make sure, amen, amen, when it looks like you're by yourself, hallelujah, there's more in number with you than it is with the enemy. Somebody ought to give God a praise right there. And when Sambalus, the Huronite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official heard about this, they was very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. And I went to Jerusalem, and after staying there three days, I sat out during the night with a few others. I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. By night, amen, I went out uh, through the valley gate toward the jackal well and dung gate, examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down, and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I moved on toward the fountain gate and the king's pool, but there was not enough room for my mount to get through. And so I went up the valley by night, examining the walls. Finally, I turned back and re-entered through the valley gate, and the officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing because as yet I had said nothing to the Jews or the priests or nobles or officials of any others who would be doing the work. Sometimes, my friends, there's some work God is calling you to. Amen. Hallelujah. God will tell you to be quiet. Amen. Everybody don't need to know, hallelujah, what God doing in your life. Come on, Holy Ghost. Everybody, amen, ain't ready to handle, hallelujah, how God is planning on blessing you, amen, to have impact in somebody's life, to have impact on your job, to have impact, amen, in your community. And God is doing some great things, glory to God. Sometime, hallelujah, he won't lie you to tell anybody, hallelujah, what he's doing, hallelujah, that nobody will frustrate the grace of God on your life. Hallelujah. Then I said to them, you see, the trouble we are in, Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, 
and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on means what the king has said to me. And they replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. But when Sabalus and the Huronite, Tobiah and the Ammonite official and Geshem and the Arab heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. Some folk, amen, gonna laugh, amen, because they don't think God can use you. Come on, Holy Ghost. Some folk, amen, gonna laugh and ridicule you, amen, because they gonna believe, amen, you ain't really heard from the Lord. But you got to be steadfast, amen. You got to be focused. You got to be walking, hallelujah, in consistency and in commitment unto the Lord, hallelujah, that no matter how they smirk at you, no matter how they laugh at you, no matter what they say about you, hallelujah, you going on in the name of the Lord, doing what God has called you to do, hallelujah. Don't be swayed, eh, hallelujah, at what folk is saying and how they looking and how they acting, glory to God. You just keep doing what God's called you to do and watch what God does in your life. Hallelujah. Keep on working for the Lord. They asked, what is this you are doing? And they asked, are you rebuilding against the king? And I answered them by saying, the God of heaven will give us success. Look at your neighbor. Tell the neighbor, the God of heaven gonna give me success. You got to believe that, glory to God. No matter what you see, you got to believe that. No matter how far down you think you are, you got to believe, glory to God, that you gonna come out victorious in the blessed name of Jesus. The God of heaven gonna make sure you successful in the blessed name of Jesus. Give God a praise right there. We his servants, will start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. If you ain't gonna join in, hallelujah, and be a part of the solution, hallelujah, we don't need you causing more problems, hallelujah. You might as well go on and sit on down, hallelujah. You ain't got no parts of what God is doing. If you ain't wanna be a part of the solution, glory to God, You ain't got no right to God's blessing. Hallelujah. This is for God's people that love God and who want to see God do great things. And not only do you want to see it, you believe that it's coming. You believe, amen. You don't believe what the naysayers are saying. You don't believe what they talk about on Facebook, hallelujah, about how God ain't moving over at the potter's house, Dayton International Ministry. I got news for you, my friend. This house was God's house before we got here. This house was God's house when they built it way back when. This house was God's house, hallelujah, when they first thought about putting a church on the corner in Germantown and West Stewart here in the ghetto, glory to God. This is God's house, and God gonna take care of his people. And he going to do that with us or without us. Glory to God. We're not the common denominator in God doing what he's going to do. Jesus is the common denominator. The Holy Spirit is the common denominator. God is the common denominator. Hallelujah. He don't need us, glory to God, but I'm thankful he's invited us to join him at his word. Can you shout hallelujah? Yeah. We've been invited to join God at his work. Who is man, Lord, that you are mindful of us? Who, who are we, amen, that you would invite us, glory to God, into this royal priesthood, into this royal family? Who are we, Lord God, that you would choose us? It's all about Jesus and his will is going to be done. Bishop said it this way, you can bank on it, come on, Holy Ghost. His will is going to be done. You bank on it. Father God, we love you, we thank you, we bless in your name this morning. We ask, Lord God, that you would continue to have your way. Allow us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Help us, Lord God,
not only to hear, but to be receptive to the word of God, the move of God, the spirit of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. Father, you're welcome in this house. You're welcome in this space. Have your way, Lord God. Glorify yourself. Change lives, change hearts, change mindsets, Lord God. That we'll be ready to go into battle, Lord God. And we'll know, Lord God, that the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord's. Hallelujah. And you've never lost a battle. Hallelujah. You've never lost a battle. And you don't plan to start now. In Jesus' name, put your hands together and give God the best praise you can. I said give him the best praise you can. Give God the best praise you can. He's been good to you. Give him the best praise you can. Hallelujah. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan. When they camped before uh, the crossing over, they, hallelujah, they just began to believe God according to Joshua 3 and 1. Have you ever experienced what people call deja vu? You know, when you feel like you've been somewhere or done something before. Here God's people had been there before, camped on the east side of the Jordan River. However, the last time, amen, that they were there, they didn't do so well. You see, God, after freeing them from slavery and delivering them from Pharaoh, had offered them a new life and a new land a land flowing with milk and honey. But for the fear of the unknown because of a bad report by 10 spies and due to their lack of faith in God, they refused, amen, their new beginning. There are some people, amen, that because of their experience with the church or because of their experience, hallelujah, with the people of God or because of their experience, hallelujah, when God didn't come through for them when they thought he should have, hallelujah, they'll try and tell you, amen, ain't no sense of you, amen, believing in God. Ain't no sense of you, amen, trusting in somebody you can't see, hallelujah. He didn't do it for me. He ain't going to do it for you. But you can't get caught up, amen, in what somebody else believes about their God you got to know God for yourself you got to know amen that he is a way maker amen you got to know amen how he didn't brought you out many times before hallelujah and brought you in you got to know amen how his healing hand had been on your life you got to know amen when you was facing danger and you was in arms way you know it wasn't nothing but the Lord that got you out of that glory to God you got to know for yourself don't let nobody change your mind about how good God been to you no, no, don't let nobody talk you out, glory to God, of what you know God done done. Oh, yeah. You got folk, amen, that tell you, look, you've been going over there all the time. You've been, you've been praying about that thing for a long time. Hallelujah, God ain't done that thing yet. You might as well go ahead and do that on your own. No. The Bible says, wait on the Lord. And again, I say wait. He may not come when I want him. But he's always been on time. Hallelujah. And I know, amen, that God don't come through for me again. Don't let nobody talk you out the blessings God has for your life. And so here, the people of God, amen, God has brought them out of slavery and was ready to take them in to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah. But because of their own fear and because of some bad report that they had received from some folk, amen, who didn't believe God anyway, they decided, amen, well, you know, if, if, if Hookie and Ray Ray said that we can't make it, if they say we can't take it, I guess, I mean, they've been in this thing a long time. You know, if they, if they say we can't do it, I guess we can't do it. No. I love Pookie and Ray Ray. I, I thank God for them. Amen. But I ain't leaning. I ain't, my trust is not on them. I'm trusting in the Lord. Amen. 
And if God said, amen, that you can overcome it, if God said you can come out, if God said he's going to bring you through, if God said, hey, hallelujah, that it's not going to take you under, it's not going to kill you, glory to God, trust in the Lord, hallelujah, and watch what God does for your life. Amen. And so here, their faith, their lack of faith, they refuse their new beginning. Choosing rather to hold on to the old ways and the old life. It cost them. Boy, did it cost them. They were forced as a people to wander in a barren wilderness for 40 long years. 40 years of never staying put. 40 years of always moving about. 40 years of sleeping in tents and having to live out of a suitcase. 40 years of wondering and now they find themselves once again in the same spot that they've been in all these years. Aren't you tired, my friend, of being in the same place you were 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago? You still, glory to God, in the same place, hallelujah, that God been trying to bring you out of. Still mindset, glory to God. Still thinking the same way we used to think. Still behaving the same way we used to behave. Aren't you tired, my friend? God said they were so in love with their old life. They were so in love with their old ways. But they weren't willing to be introduced to something new. Here, God, once again, and all his love, grace, and mercy is offering them a new start. Even after seeing him wonder for four years, ain't that just like God? We can turn our back on him. We can run around and call everything a hallelujah, trusting everybody but God. We can, we, can, we can talk about him. We can not come to church. We can, we can be just like Paul, persecuting Christians, hallelujah. But here at the end of it all, God is still standing there, hallelujah, with open and loving arms saying, come unto me, all oh, ye that are heavy laden and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, hallelujah. But my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's still standing there, hallelujah, with his hands outstretched to us. But I know, amen, you didn't come when I called you last year. I know you didn't answer, hallelujah, when I tried to get your attention when you was going through what you was going through. I know you didn't answer, hallelujah, every time I showed up while you was in the hospital. Every time I showed up when you thought your life was over, you still never called on me. But I want you to know because I love you, hallelujah, here I am again. I'm a father, amen, I'll never give up on you. I'm a lover, I'll never stop loving you. Won't you give me another chance? How many of you know he's a God of a second chance? Come on, Holy Ghost. I said he's a God of a second chance. And here he is standing, once again, offering the children of Israel a new start, a second chance to live in that promised land and to bask in his blessing. It's this time under the leadership of Joshua that they would have got it right. They would have crossed over the Jordan and been able to start again. It's the second chance, amen, for God's people, hallelujah, that had occurred over 3,000 years ago. And you can read about it, hallelujah, in the books of Deuteronomy and the books of Joshua. Just read about, hey, man, how God continued to bless them and to be available to them year after year after year. We ain't got to look far, glory to God. We just look over our own life. 
And just remember, hallelujah, just don't last a week, glory to God, what God did for us. Just don't last month, hallelujah, how he brought us out. Just don't last year, glory to God, when they told me I lost my job, when they told me I'll never be able to do this or do that. Hallelujah, God showed up just in time. Hallelujah, now I'm working, now I'm living, now I'm blessing the Lord, now I'm being a blessing to the kingdom of God. Come on, Holy Ghost, now, glory to God, you can see just over your own life. That's why we praise him. That's why we shout. We don't shout, hallelujah, to try and pump you up. We don't shout, hallelujah, just to try to get you, hallelujah, to clap. We shout, glory to God, to get you free. We shout to get you delivered. We shout, glory to God, that you can enjoy the benefits of God. God says if, the, if we don't praise him, the rocks are going to cry out. And I know, amen, when we think about that, we say, ain't no rock going to cry for me. But I'm going to tell you something. There's some folk. I don't think he's necessarily talking about the rocks, but even though I believe he can make the rocks cry out. There's some bricks that'll cry. Come on, Holy Ghost. But I believe, amen, what God is really saying to us, hallelujah, is that there's some people, amen, that we've called rocks that we've given up on that's sleeping under bridges right now. There's some folk, hallelujah, sleeping on park benches. There's some folks sleeping in boxes, glory to God. There's some folks around the country, hallelujah, ain't got no place to lay their head. I believe, Lord God, if you don't want to praise me, I got some folk, glory to God, that'll get up and give me praise right there in the ballpark. They'll get up and give me praise right there on the railroad track. They'll give me praise, glory to God. You remember the story when Bob said they had a marriage feast and God invited all his people and all of them had excuses as to why they couldn't come to the marriage feast and they came back and told the king well king everybody you sent us to all, all around the region they all got excuses why they can't come once somebody said well I'm, I just got married I got to go and attend to my wife <laughs> hallelujah and another one said well my dad just died I got to go attend to my dad hallelujah and Jesus said let the dead better dead Jesus said, okay, if they don't want to come, if they don't want the benefits of what I have for them, if they don't want to enjoy all the blessings that I have for their life, I'll tell you what you do. Go out and get the Gentiles. Go out and get those folk, hallelujah, that they said would never make it in. Go out and get those folk, hallelujah, the hoes and the prostitutes, the pimps, hallelujah, and the drug addicts, hallelujah. Go out and get all those, hallelujah, hallelujah, that folk don't believe God can use. Go out and get all of them and fill my house that we might enjoy the presence of the Lord. You don't want to praise him? There is a rock somewhere that'll give God glory. There is somebody, amen, that'll take your place. God, is there anybody that feel like I do? I'll take it. The grace of God been too good to me, Dr. Bear. The love of God been too good to me. His outstretched arms, hallelujah, have saved me from myself. Mr. Chelsea. His outstretched love, glory to God, had kept me, hallelujah, when I wanted to die. He said, no, you're going to live because there's still work for you to do. Have you ever been under so much pressure? Have you ever been under so much pressure? Take me out of this. If you don't take me out of this, I know folk, glory to God, they prayed that God would kill them. The pressure was too hard. The pain was too excruciating. But God called you. God chose you to use you for his glory. God said there's still work he wants to do in your life. There's still things, amen, and people he wants you to see and people he wants you to have impact with. There's some things, amen, that God is allowing you to go through even right now. Hallelujah. And it's really not about you. It's about what God's planning to do for somebody else. And he's using you as a conduit, glory to God. Hallelujah. If God can bring you out, they'll know God can bring them out. Too often we run from pain, and I understand it, glory to God. Who, who wants to enjoy pain? Sometimes enduring pain is necessary that your son and daughter might make it through. 
Think about the pain Jesus went through that we might live and have eternal life. The Bible says, amen, he died, amen, while we were yet sinners. He endured this, the most humiliating and excruciating pain that man could ever endure. Hallelujah. Why? Because he loved us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't do that for him. He did it for us, glory to God. He did it for you, glory to God, that you might enjoy, hallelujah, this last Sunday of 2018. Think about all the years, glory to God. We talked about it a few Sundays. We talk about it all the time. We really only, we really only promised 70 summers on this earth. Think about it from that perspective. How many summers... And we didn't goofed off and wasted, and we didn't went out and play. we didn't, we didn't blow, we didn't went out and just had a ball. Hallelujah! How many summers have we really, Hallelujah, spent our time, Hallelujah, just having a good time with our family, with our friends? You only required seventy of them, and so the fact that God has allowed us to see another winter, come on, come on, that's a blessing in itself. He's allowed us to see the last Sunday of 2018. That's God's love. That's God's grace and his mercy toward us. And so here, the people of God is faced with whether or not they're going to accept this new start in Christ or they're going to continue on the path they've always continued on. What's your point, preacher? The point is, my friends, that God has always been a God of second chance. You and I are here today. We're just like those Israelites camped on the east side of our new beginning. God is offering us. He's offering me and he's offering you. Hallelujah. The potter's house, Dayton, God is offering us a new start. A chance to live in the better. I said not a chance to be better, a chance to live in the better. Glory to God. Sure, God may offer it to us. He's offered us times, many times before, new starts, new beginnings, new chance. And we've made some wrong choices along the way. Uh, throughout our past, amen, we didn't do everything the way uh, God had told us to do it or the way that was expected of us. But here we are again, and the choice is yours as to whether or not you're going to begin again. The choice is yours as to whether or not, hallelujah, you're going to try and do it better by doing it God's way. The choice is yours, amen. Either you're going to trust God or you're going to trust your job. Come on, Holy Ghost. The job God gave you. That raise God gave you. That position God gave you. Too often, uh, we heard our bishop say, we thank God for the new business. We thank God for the promotion. We thank God for the blessings on our job and all the great things that God is doing, hallelujah, and having folk, hallelujah, find favor to us and want to bless our life. We thank God for that. But we should never put more trust in that than we do our Heavenly Father. We should never put more trust in, and, and, and look here. And look here, and this, listen, listen, this is not an indictment on anybody. But this is to help us understand where our priorities lie. I love my job. I thank God for it. It helps me take care of my family. It helps me assist the church. It helps me bless people's lives and have impact. I thank God for it. Even though I'm catching hell on my job. Come on, Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Even though, amen, if you're trying to live for God, you're trying to pastor the church, you're trying to be holy, you're trying to walk in righteousness, you're trying to do everything right, hallelujah. Folk got something, everybody got something to say. Come on, Holy God. 
Oh yeah, folk, folk, when folks see that you're trying to do the right thing, folks see you're pushing through, folks see you're praying, folks see, amen, you done made up your mind, hallelujah, you're going to be a prayer warrior for the Lord, hallelujah, everything, every demonic spirit is going to be released on your life, hallelujah, folk coming up against you, these folk knew you all your life, now all of a sudden they want to act funny, hallelujah, all of a sudden they want to act crazy, hallelujah, but I got news for you, my friend, that's what ministry is. If they ain't acting crazy, if they ain't looking at you sideways, something wrong with your walk. If folk ain't coming up against the anointing of God on your life, you ought to attract your salvation, glory to God. Because the Bible says, glory to God, that he suffered, glory to God, and we're going to suffer too. Folk ain't happy about what God's doing in your life. Folk ain't proud, amen, and excited, amen, that God promoting you and God delivering you and God setting you free. They remember how you was up under the bridge a couple years ago. They remember how you used to, how, they remember how you used to smoke that thing, hallelujah, and shoot that thing up. They remember how we used to do all that stuff. And now you talking about you love the Lord, you praising God, you praying for folk, you laying hands on folk, you encouraging people, you're delivering folk by the power of God's word. You don't think folk gonna come up against that? The enemy don't want to see you doing that. He don't want to see your children saved. He don't want to see your grandchildren worshiping God. Hallelujah. It's a new start. God is saying, I'm going to give you a fresh start. You can choose now. Let's do this thing. Let's go, look at. Let's go all in for real. Is there anybody ready to go all in for God for real? And so and so and so the enemy, the enemy, hallelujah, is, 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 is not happy. The enemy is shaking in his boots because he realized, Amen, that where I used to have them and what I used to have over them, I don't have that on them no more. They're trusting God for real. They believe in God for a breakthrough for real, Dr. Bear. They believe, amen, that they're coming out of this thing. They believe, glory to God, that this thing, hallelujah, ain't going to last always. And so the enemy's angry. The enemy's, he, he's memorized. The enemy, he's trying to figure out what we're going to do. Somebody sent me a, t a video the other day. And, and they said it was one of the most powerful videos you will ever see. And I looked at it, and I, I listened. It was 18 minutes long. And I wish I had it. I wish I had it. I wish we had the time. I was short today. Uh, but I promise you, it, 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 it's coming. I believe uh, we're going to show it in this house, and it's going it's it's to it's make you feel some kind of way. But, 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 but one thing for sure, amen, it's going to cause you, amen, to do some self-appraisal. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. It's going to cause us, amen, to reflect on, amen, on what we really believe about God. And in this video, amen, they was talking about, hallelujah, how the enemy, hallelujah, have been working for years trying to get Afro-Americans, hallelujah, to succumb, hallelujah, to killing one another. Talked about how they've been working on the mind of Afro-Americans for a long time, trying to keep them uneducated, trying to keep them, hallelujah, from wanting to do anything, trying to keep them, hallelujah, from believing in a God Almighty. They've been working on the mind of Afro-Americans for a long time, hallelujah, keeping us, glory to God, in the dark. So they shower us, amen, with bling bling and the gold, and, and, the, and the firing cars and the big wheels, glory to God. 
and they've taken, amen, the every opportunity for you to learn. Uh, you know, for those that, that know folk that's in the penitentiary, hallelujah, it used to be a time in the penitentiary where you can get a master's degree behind prison walls. It used to be a time in the penitentiary where you can go, hallelujah, and learn something about the Lord. It was a time, amen, where you can go, hallelujah, even though you had done wrong, even though, hallelujah, you done messed up, you can go to the penitentiary, hallelujah, and God will turn your life around. But now, the system then got comfortable. And they've taken, they taken all these things out where man can educate himself. And they're and they, and they filling them up now, hallelujah, with, uh, with, with, with video games and play machines. And you can play games all day. You can talk on the phone in your cell. Come on, Holy Ghost. You can write emails, glory to God, in your cell on JPEG. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we wonder why, well, we wonder why folk keep going in and out of these places. Because the enemy that made it so comfortable, look at the enemy that made it, well, some of them living better on the inside than they were on the outside. And we'll house you up. We got air conditioning. We got heat. We got everything you need. Amen. You ain't got the one. We got three beds in the car. You got to look at three meals in the car. You ain't got the one for nothing. We got everything you need right here behind the prison wall. Keep on coming. Keep on going out there killing folk. Keep on going out there robbing folk. Keep on going out there living like the devil. Keep on going out there doing your thing, making it rain. <laughs> Keep going out there getting your cheese. Keep going on chopping it up. Keep doing what you do, glory to God. We got room for you. Somebody told me, the one thing I love about God is that no matter how far we've gone from him, no man has ever gone too far that God can't reach. Come on, Holy Ghost. I said no man's ever gone too far God can't reach. And I've come to find out that God's got people everywhere. And even when the enemy is trying to make us believe that there is no hope for them behind prison walls, God is saying, I'm there. Look here, the man of God said, where can I go that you're not there? If I make my bed in hell, you are there too. There is no wall big enough, thick enough, round enough, high enough that can keep God out. God is able to penetrate the hardest heart. He got to you. He got to me. We ain't got to look across the aisle. All we got to do is look at ourselves. How hard was your heart when God found you? How hard is some of y'all's heart right now? Glory to God. I'm coming down your aisle now. Some of us been in this thing a long time. We still got a hard heart, brother. We still walking in rebellion. We still don't want to line up and do it God's way. But we love the Lord. He heard my cry. And God is sitting there saying, I still love you. He's still saying there's still a chance for you. There's still a chance for me to turn this thing around in your life. The choice is ours. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, y'all didn't get that, did you? See, I done ran with the devil too long. I know that I was a dead man walking. I know, Brother Gray, that if I had not been the Lord on my side, that the enemy would have swallowed me up a long time ago. Ain't no doubt in my mind about it. And so I know today, Brother Terry, that today, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. 
I'm talking about everything walking. I'm talking about I don't care how rebellious, I don't care how much they whine, I don't care what they say, I don't care what's going on. As for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. And we got to take the authority over our household. It's time out. Well, you know, I, I mean, praise God. Let, look, they, I mean, they growing up now. Let them make their own decision. No. If you don't influence them, the devil will. If you don't take charge of them, I promise you, the devil got somebody out there that'll speak sweet nothings in the ear and get them to do something crazy and they'll be doing life in the penitentiary or pushing up daisies in somebody's graveyard. It's time, it's time out for us making excuses as to why we can't take control of our household. And my wife, you know, she, God bless her, she get on me so bad. My, and my boys, I mean, I love them. God know I do. And see, a lot of my problem is I done lost so much before. And sometimes in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, like, I don't want to do it the way Daddy used to do it because I don't want to lose them. Come on, Holy God. Is anybody like, is anybody like that think like I do sometimes? I, you know, I mean, I, I know what it is to get beat down for real. Come on, Holy God. And I don't want I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to discipline them that way. I don't want to punish them that way. And sometimes they get to look at me with them old beady eyes and they get to, you know, and they get to love it on me, Daddy, you know. And I'll be like, baby, go ahead. Let them, baby, let them. Go ahead, let them. Let them. It, it, it's not. And she looked at me, she's like, baby, she told me the other day. I'm, can I just be transparent? She said, baby, you, you're really you're, you're helping them disrespect. You're helping them disrespect me because I'd already told them no. I already told them that they can't do that right now. And so they know that if they come to you, Daddy, that they can just push you over and just look at you, you know, and you're going to be like, okay, go ahead. What you want to do? Yeah, go ahead. Watch TV. It's 11 o'clock at night. No, you're supposed to be in the bed two hours ago, three hours ago. You both been in bed at 8 o'clock. Here it is, 11. You waiting on me to come home. To get me to go against my wife. Come on, Holy Ghost. And because we're trying to have friends opposed to being parents, glory to God, we're allowing the enemy to cause division in our home. And God said, in 2019, we're going to do something better. We're going to do something different. I'm talking about me. And I know the reason why God had me say it because somebody in here is doing that same thing. We're supposed to love on our children. We're supposed to be the best we can. But we have to raise them to be respectful to their mothers and to their elders and to one another. Be respectful to everyone. Amen. That's our responsibility that God has given us. I, I don't know why we went off on that time, amen, but that's what, that's what God said that I was supposed to say. That's what I said. If that's for you, amen, use it. Change it. Can you say amen? Okay, I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. So here, they were given a chance to live in the better. It's the same offer, same chance God has given us here at the Potter's House Dayton and National. The choice is off. Whether or not we cling to the old or embrace the new. Today, I want to serve notice on the devil. And I declare to all of our haters all of those who said you weren't going to make it, all of those that said you were not going to manifest, I want to say to them, as our bishop said the other day, game over. Come on, Holy Ghost. Game is over. Game is over. Bishop said on the last Wednesday 
as he watched the Lakers ball game that it was gloomy when he began to see that it looked like his team was going to lose. And I heard God say, amen, that it's been gloomy for 2018 for many of you, hallelujah, and it looked like, amen, that you're not going to manifest. It looked like things not going to turn around. It looks like, amen, that you're not going to be able to do what you thought you were going to be able to do. Things looking kind of gloomy for you right now. But if you take just a few seconds, and just remember who you are. Victory belongs to you. Remember who you are. You win already. You are already a winner in Christ Jesus. Why? Because you cannot lose with Jesus Christ. Victory belongs to you. You've made it through to this last Sunday of the year. You were told, many of you, you weren't going to make it. They told you by this time next year, I bet. Folk that made wagers, amen, that your child wasn't going to make it. The folk that made wagers, amen, your child, amen, he ain't going to never get that thing right. He, she ain't going to never turn it around. She's going to always be that way. How many of you know the devil is a liar? I said, how many of you know the devil is a liar? I don't care what it looks like. Yeah, they acting crazy now. Yeah, they walking in rebellion. Yeah, they not doing everything the way you think they are. But you got to know what the word of the Lord said. You win, glory to God. We got to get our eyes off the enemy and put our eyes on the line of the Judah, the line of Judah. Yeah, how many of y'all like my shirt? See the line right there? Amen. I saw that. I said, oh, my God, I got to get that. The Lion of Judah. He's living on the inside of us. The Lion of Judah is down on the inside of you. There is nothing that can whoop him. There's nothing that's too big for him. There's nothing you're going through that he can't bring you out of. There's no illness too hard that he can't heal or deliver you from. He's the Lion of Judah. He's the great I am. Two thousand nineteen. I'm challenging all of us. Let's see God as He really is. Not as Mama said He was. Not as Grandma told. Not, and not that they told us wrong. But we got to see God for ourselves. You got to know. You got to know that God's love for you. It's just as amazing as it was or as it is for mom and dad or grandparents or anyone else. You got to know God for yourself. God is able to change your circumstance. In 2019, you're going to laugh again. In 2019, you're going to live again. In 2019, things are going to get better for you. Your financial situation go turn around. Take your eyes off your situation and put them on the Lion of Judah. Glory to God. My wife and I have been believing God for the last seven years. Hallelujah. For her green card. 
And when Donald Trump took took office, first thing I thought, like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and God said, see, there you go. There you go. You're looking at man. You're looking at the situation. You're looking at what everybody else is saying and what everybody else is doing. And God is telling us, my friends, in 2019, we got to stop doing that. We got to put our eyes on the Lord. His will is going to be done in your life. I don't care what Donald Trump do. I don't care what the policy says. I don't care what the enemy is saying ain't going to happen. If God, look here, God said, if you abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Why? Because he is the vine and we are the branches. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Guess what? He owns the hills. God is concerned about you. He's concerned about your situation. He's concerned about what concerns you. I heard in this word, God, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, and I've never seen their seed bacon. If he feeds the fowls of the air, how much more is he going to take care of you? How much more is he going to take care of your children? How much more is he going to be the resource for your life. Can you shout hallelujah? I dare you to give God a praise right there. I dare you to give him a praise right there. New starts, new beginnings, they're always great to have. Second chances in life are a gift from God. But oftentimes, they're not that easy to see when you're going through something. And so it's great, my friends, that we can have a do-over. It's great when we can have a do-over with God. Many times, people of God, we don't take advantage of the do-overs. Oftentimes, our new beginnings becomes hauntedly like our old ending. Instead of moving forward, we end up moving backwards. And we find ourselves wandering in a barren wilderness. We find ourselves like the children of Israel living out of suitcases. It's because of this tendency that we have of always have uh, wanting to mess things up. We, 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 we don't go in thinking that. But for some reason, when we, when we depend on ourselves and we're trying to do it our own way, we have a tendency of always messing it up. And so not only is God the God of second chances, but we've come to know that he's a God of third, fourth, and fifth chances. Some of us 10 chances. Some of us 100. Some of us 200. Some of us, we over 500. We got me. We, some of us... We, we're probably pushing a million, glory to God. But all of us know that we're in this time of year, this season, where people naturally think about New Year's resolutions. They naturally start thinking about starting over, new beginnings, new diets, new exercise programs, new hopes, new dreams, and new habits, new beginnings, new, uh, 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 new, new attitudes. But I want to prophesy, amen, to the house of God uh, today, amen, uh, uh, that, that, that this reality of this new year, this new beginning here at the Potter's house, hallelujah, it's going to be the year of 2019, amen, that we are kingdom connected. Oh, come on, hold on. We're going to be kingdom connected. It's not going to be. It's not going to be about uh, what they doing or what she said or what he said or what, what what's going on down the road or what's going on over there across town. It's going to be about kingdom connected. We want to stay connected to the kingdom of God. 
Everything that we do, everything that we say, we want to be a house of prayer. We want to be a house, glory to God, that's committed, hallelujah, to staying connected to the Holy Ghost. I'm going to be kingdom connected. Our conversation over the last year, we acknowledged, amen, the year of expansion. We've seen God bring new members and new families into our midst. And we're grateful for what God is doing. We're grateful for how God is moving. We're grateful for how the, the youth ministry has expanded, amen, and great things is going on under the leadership of, of Elder Baxter, hallelujah, and Minister Mariah and the others back in the back, amen, doing great things for the kingdom of God. We're thankful for that for our young people. While mom and dad is out here in the sanctuary blessing the Lord and being filled with the presence of the Lord, our babies are back in the back being taught the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're back in the back learning how to give God praise, how to give God glory. They're back in the back, glory to God, being poured into. We want to be kingdom connected. And in order for us to be kingdom connected in 2019, we've got to stay connected to the peace of God. And that means, my friend, you can't allow folk to come up and come into your life, come into your space, hallelujah, and steal your peace. You can't, you can't allow folk on your job to cause you to lose your mind, hallelujah, to where you go off and lose your peace and lose your job. Because you're dealing with some emotional baggage. Come on, Holy Ghost. We've got to stay connected to the peace of God. How do we do that? The Bible says, he that keepeth his mind stayed on the Lord shall have perfect peace. When your family is not walking the way you think they are, and your kids not lining up, your kids not being respectful and not doing the thing that they're supposed to do, you just lay on the altar in your house, on your room, somewhere in your house. You get before God, hallelujah, and you keep your mind stayed on the Lord and allow God to deal with your children. Allow God to deal with that man. Your husband, your spouse, your significant other, allow God to deal with your wife, hallelujah, and her attitude. Allow God to deal with it. Don't lose your peace. Enemy steal your peace. He just stole your joy. And the joy of the Lord is what? Your strength. If you ain't got no strength, how many of you know when you ain't got no strength, you ain't trying to be bothered with nobody. You, you ain't got no strength. You don't want to look at, look at, look, look at. Don't look at. <laughs> Talk to the hand. Come on, Holy Ghost. I ain't heard that in years. Glory to God. That was the Holy Ghost. Come on. Have you ever wondered if God ever? What if a God would ever tell us that? We've been so rebellious, and we've been so in our own way. We've been so doing it our own way, not listening to what he's telling us, not going where he said go, not doing what he said do, and we're just going about our life, hallelujah, and we're just doing whatever we think we're big and bad enough to do. What if God was to get enough of us and say, you know what, I done had enough. Talk to the hand. I thank God he's not like that. We do know the Spirit says that the Spirit of God will not always strive with man. The day is coming. When you're going to even change your oil, like Bishop, you're going to change your oil. Come on. You're going to change your oil. Or you might be left out. You remember the 10? You remember the 10? The 10? The 10? You remember how they had the 10 lamps? Five of them went and got their oil. They went and got, took care of their business. They got their stuff taken care of. And the other five felt like we, we still got time. Come on, Elder, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go shake it up a little bit. We got time. We, we can still make it. 
And the Bible says that the, the king came when he was least expecting them. What am I saying? I'm saying in 2019, my friends, God is telling us we need to get our house in order. We look here. Uh, 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 look. And I'm not and I'm not necessarily talking about our house, meaning our family. I'm talking about our house. I'm talking about I'm talking about this house. I'm talking about our heart. Where is your heart in relation to God? Where, where, where is your heart in relation? Where are you? Where's your heart in regards to your faith? What do you really believe God to do? How do you really see him? Is he just some name that you didn't heard about, you have a knowledge of, or do you really know the man? Come on, Holy Ghost. It's time out for just reading about it, hearing others talk about it. In this next dimension, in this new season, we've got to know. We've got to have a personal relationship with him. We've got to be able to go boldly to the throne room of God and say, Abba, Father. Do you know him? In this space, in this house, you can know him. You can be connected. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, stay connected. I'm going to jump. Uh, it's so hard, so much. If we want this new year to start off successful, we need to embrace where our help comes from. David said in Psalms 121, 1 through 3, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth, and he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. In other words, God's never asleep on your situation. He's never, he's never not aware of where you are or what you're going through. And that's why, my friends, uh, uh, when, when God gives you a chance to lay down and get you some rest, you need to get you some rest. Ain't no sense of you being up all night long, hallelujah, when God says he got you covered. If he never sleeps or slumber, that means he's up watching over your situation, watching over your family, watching over your life. What you up for, glory to God? Go to sleep. Trust God. Believe God. Because when we up worrying, when we up pacing, when we up whining and crying, them, oh, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. That means you are not trusting God. That means you are not trusting God and you're believing on your own strength, on your own power. And my friend, it's not going to manifest if that's your case. Lay down and go to sleep. The Bible says tomorrow's not promised. Hallelujah. But God told us, hallelujah, that he's able to provide for us. He is our provision. He is our source. He is everything we need. Hallelujah. Go to sleep, glory to God, and get you some rest. So you can be wide awake to be used by the master in the morning. God willing. Come on, Holy Ghost. Amen. Go sleep. Amen. I done got to, I done got to the point. I'll be 60 years old in a couple months. And I done got to the point, hey man. Hey man, just saying 60 years old. Praise God. I remember 60 when I was when I was little. 60, was like, my God, you 60? But God is good. After all the hell 
I done raised? All the wrong I done done? You mean to tell me God allowed me to live 60 years? You mean to tell me God still can use me? To pour and speak into somebody else's life? We ought to be asking God, you mean to tell me at 20 years old, God, you still want to use me? You mean at 30 years old, God, you still want to use me? After all I done said, all I done done, you mean, God, you still love me that much? You want to use me for the kingdom? All of us should be, baby, we should be talking to God just like that. Lord, you mean you want to use me? No, don't, just look here, my friend, let me help you. Don't none of us deserve nothing. I said we don't deserve nothing. God don't owe us anything. If he never does anything else, he's done more than enough. I was, me and my wife was talking, we were praying every day, and then my spirit, Lord, said, you'll be a millionaire right now. All the money you didn't blow. Many of us sitting in this room are millionaires two, three, four, five times over when we consider all the money we have blown. Y'all, wait, come on, Holy Ghost. Y'all know we didn't blow some money. We didn't spend stuff. I didn't spend stuff on this shirt. I didn't need this shirt. This ain't the line of Judah. Glory to God. This guy sitting over in China somewhere, glory to God, spending my money. He over there in China, glory to God. Come on, yeah, go ahead, Pastor. Get some more to send some money over here. We learn how to spend money. Why? Because we're trying to be happy. Why? Because we medicating ourselves. A lot of the stuff we spending money on, it's a medication. Come on, Holy Ghost. I see you looking at me, sick. Just keep on looking at me. Amen. Anybody even know what I'm talking about? You come on, Holy Ghost. We spending money on some things, Lord God, because it makes us feel good. We waste money on things, and then we wonder why we can't pay our tithes and off. Then we wonder why we can't bless the pastor, or we can't bless the saints. Or we can't bless the neighbor. We in debt. Many of us went out and spent buku money. I ain't said that word in a long time. Buku. That's one of them street terms. Eh? Some of us went out and spent a lot of money for Christmas. And I'm not saying we shouldn't spend and shower ourselves and bless our children, our grandchildren. But a lot of us went in debt trying to please them because it makes us feel good for something we didn't do years ago and so we're trying to pay our way through it come on Holy Ghost God wants to set us free in 2019 if you can't do it you can't do it trust the Lord and the truth be told some of these kids they don't care what you give them they just want to spend time with you Look at my son. He would rather just me love him. He would just love. He would, if I could just carry him around all day, rubbing his head, telling him how blessed, how special you are. Boy, you so blessed. You so anointed. Boy, you so, you're like, I'm so proud of you. I mean, you're just a great young man. I thank God for how you're learning to read. I thank God for what he's doing in your life. I thank God for how you're helping your brother and your mom to do things around the house. Son, you are, you are growing up to be a mighty man of God. I thank God for you. He looked at me like, I am, Dad. I am. I said, yes, you are, son. He said, praise God. Hallelujah. Let that be their Christmas. Tell them how great they are in the Lord. We buying all these toys and trains and things and games because we're trying to get them out of our face. We're trying to get them somewhere where we can go sit down and play where I can take care of my business. I'm just looking. I love you. That's why God called me. I'm lo I can say it because I love you. God know I love you. Look at I'm trying to get us free in 2019. We're not taking this mentality in 2019. 
We're going to be kingdom connected. My wife has a rule at my house, and I break it every now and then. And I talk about my first family because that's who I, that's who I'm with. She said, baby, the kids don't watch but 30 minutes of TV a day. That's it. I said, baby, 30 minutes? I mean, at least let them watch. I mean, no, 30 minutes. They reading books. They praying, they talking, they coloring. They singing gospel songs or whatever they singing. They singing, they blessing the Lord. But they get to watch 30 minutes of TV cartoons. And she watching what their PJ Maxx is. They love PJ Maxx. That's all they get to watch. <laughs> I said, boy, y'all got your mama, she's a slave driver, boy. <laughs> but she understands the pull of the world on our children. She understands. Because all you got to do, my son them started school this year. And his first Three days, three weeks, and three weeks, four weeks in school. He come home talking different, moving different. I said, "Where you learn that at?" And he in the Christian school. So quit talking about these public schools. There's a whole lot of folk in Christian school doing a lot more worse than some of these public schools. Hallelujah! Come on, Holy Ghost. He come home doing stuff. I'm like, "Where you doing? Where that come from?" I said, "Lord, I'm like, you yeah. know." And so my wife, I said, baby, you right? You know, every now and then they come to me like that. I go in your room, watch them. I'm telling your mom. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. Don't judge me. Y'all pray for me. I'm trying to keep peace in my home. Amen. But listen. We thank God for you. Nehemiah was trying to get the people to understand that no matter where they were, how far they had gone from God, that God still loved them so much that he was willing to let them start over. He was willing to give them a new start. Yeah, we blew it in 2018. We didn't quite do everything the way we were supposed to. Yeah, we messed up here and there. We spent this money and spent that money. We shouldn't have kind of did that, but we did. Amen. But guess what God is saying? You can start again. This is a new start for you. You can be better. You can live in the better. You can enjoy the peace of God. You can enjoy your family again. So that's my prayer for you today. That every need that you have will be provided in Christ Jesus. That the peace of God will rest, rule, and abide upon every household represented here today. That you will walk in the love of God You'll walk in the peace of God, and the joy of the Lord will always be your strength. Stop focusing so much time on trying to be happy and enjoy the joy of the Lord. Let, let, me, let me say that again. Don't spend another moment worrying about somebody making you happy. Trust in the joy of the Lord. There's nothing like it. Happiness comes and goes. The joy of the Lord is everlasting. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'll tell you what I like to do, amen. I got there's so much more I want to share. I want to share this one last thing. Bishop shared so much with us over the weekend that he was here. And, and you're going to hear a lot more uh, from my spiritual father and what he's spoken into my life over this house. But one thing he shared that I want to share with you. The enemy is coming against you 
the way he is coming against you because he knows that his time is short. I said he knows his time is short. And so God is looking for a warfare remnant. And so on tomorrow, we're coming in dressed in our camouflage. We're coming in dressed ready for war, ready for battle. We're going into 2019, my friends, and we're taking back everything the enemy has stolen. Come on, Holy Ghost. We're taking back every, look here. If he done stole your peace, you going to get it. If he done stole your family, you going to get it. If he done stole, look here. If he done lied to you and told you hallelujah, you ain't going to never mount to nothing. You're going to go back into the enemy's camp and you're going to take back what the enemy stole from you in the blessed name of Jesus. It's yours. It belongs to you and you got to go get it. Time out, time out, I wish I had. No, go get it. And so when you come in here tomorrow, we're coming in here ready for battle. We're coming in here ready to go into prayer. We're coming in here ready to go before the throne room of God. We're going to take back what the enemy stole. Look here, I'm taking my family back in the name of Jesus. The peace of God will abide in my home. Come on, Holy Ghost. And in order for that to take place, my friend, the peace of God's got to abide in you. Come on, Holy Ghost. You be the model of what peace looks like in your home. You be the model of what joy of the Lord looks like in your home. You be the model of what it looks like to be a servant of the Lord. You be the model. And we're modeling after Christ. We're modeling after Christ. God has a great work in you. God is doing some great things in your life. And I'm expecting amen in 2019 to hear a great report from the Lord from everybody in this house. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, you can do better than that. God is doing something great in your life, and I'm expecting God to do mighty things in your life. You ought to give God praise. You ought to believe that God going to do it. You ought to believe he going to do what he said he going to do in your life. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And I pray you believe it too. Father God, we love you. Father God, we thank you. You are mighty in all your way. Truly, there is none like you in all the earth. Thank you, Father, for loving us the way you do. Thank you for gracing us the way you have. Thank you, Father, for being our mind regulator. Thank you for being our heart fixer. Thank you, Father, for ordering our steps in your word. Thank you for giving us a mind to want to worship, to want to honor and love you the way that we do. Help us to be better. Help us to be greater. Help us to be mindful of one another. Help us to put others first. Help us to keep you the center of our life. We want your heart, Lord God. More like the Father we want to be. More like the Father we will be. Souls for Jesus is our battle cry. Souls for Jesus we will win until we die. We never will give in while souls are lost in sin. Souls for Jesus is our battle cry. Give God glory. We love you. We thank God for you. And we bless God for your life. See you on tomorrow. Hallelujah. The elder has something. In Jesus' name, amen.
Come on, let's give God good. Come on, let's give him glory. Come on. Come on, how many second chance folk we got in here? How many another chance folk we got in here? I don't see enough hands. I don't see. Look, if you here this morning, you got another chance. Because we blew it on yesterday. Amen. I don't know about y'all. I'm going to keep my hand raised high because I blew it this morning. See, see, when you understand, when you understand the standard that God has set, this is how you know when you blow it. He said, even if you thought about it, you didn't blow it. Not that you didn't do it, but if you thought about it, you blowed it. Yo, come on, get your hands on up there. Come on. And I know some of y'all been saved all your young life. You ain't never blow. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. But that ain't my testimony. I blowed it this morning. Hallelujah. I said the N word this morning. I learned this morning, let people get on your heart and not on your nerve. Because if they get on that last nerve, you might say one of them. Yip, 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 yip. Hallelujah. 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 Great word by our pastor. Amen. I'm not a singer, uh, but, but I'm going to put a little something in the air. Amen. Goes a little something like this. Oh, I ain't got to do hallelujah. The Lord saved me. <laughs> the Lord loves me. Amen. <laughs> Look, amen. This is that time of the service. Amen. That we want to offer you Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I know where I was when he found me. Sleeping in an abandoned building. Rolled up in some carpet. At the end of another, yet another crack bed. The same weekend that my mother died, and I never got an opportunity to tell her I was sorry. And that's where he found me. I don't know where he found you. That's, that's, that's. And I don't know if you've been found yet, but if you're in here, you can be found this morning. You can be found right now. You can be assured of your eternity. You can be assured to spend eternity with Christ. I try not to rush this moment. I kind of got... Amen. Everything we do is about this moment right here. Nothing else really matters. But your relationship with Jesus Christ. See, because my relationship, my horizontal relationship with Jesus Christ will be incarnate or demonstrated in my horizontal relationship with you. If my relationship with him ain't right, I can't be in right relationship with you. I'm fronting, falsing, and perpetrating the fraud. We just want to make that invitation. We want to offer you Jesus. Amen. That, look, that does my heart good to know we all saved. And we all family here this morning, right? So now... We want to uh, we want to make the invitation to become a part of this family. If you heard God say that the Potter's House Dayton International Ministry is where He wants to plant you and where He wants to use your gifts, man, look, our arms are open wide. I remember they said that Peter preached. And it was three thousand added one time, but I read a scripture this morning that said they preached again, and it was five thousand added to the church. When Old Baptist Church, they used to say, we want to open the doors to the church, but these doors never close. Well, so what we want to say is we want to open your arms and welcome you to our family. Amen. If that's you, we love to have you. Amen. 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 Come on, look, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Y'all can do better than that. Get out of it. 
Come on, don't get, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Stand right here with me. Amen. 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 I've been watching this brother. This brother and his wife been coming faithfully. They've been coming faithfully. Look, and it's an honor. It's an honor that they want to be in family with us because we are crazy, motley crew of, amen. They look pretty sane and sober. Amen. We're so glad you're here. Introduce you and your wife. Uh, Willie and Shafay Taylor. We uh, need you guys to hold us accountable because we are uh, up against a lot of odds. So we are. Uh, Got a blended family, and we're looking for a church home, and uh, I, I want to get connected in ministry, and uh, just grow in the Lord, and uh, be about my father's business, and I need to be held accountable. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We got you. We got you, man. We got you. I'm going to tell you the same thing that my father, Bishop Mark McGuire, told me the first time we had a conversation. I was homeless in ministry. Amen. I need to say that again. I was homeless in ministry. I was so low scriptor. Amen. And I said, Dad, I need a father, a home, and a friend. His response to me, son, got all three. <laughs> so my response to you, bro, is you got a home, you got a father, and you got friends. <laughs> Amen. 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 I should have go with Minister Chelsea here. Amen. Come on, y'all. We ought to celebrate. Come on, man. Come on. We ought to be celebrating. What is wrong? Come on. We are so myopic. We need this. The Bible says celebrate. We got to learn to celebrate one another. We got to learn to appreciate the grace of God on each other's lives. Shake it out. Give me that song so we can go out on that one. Give me Mace. Breathe, stretch, shake, let it go. I'm going to get a benediction. We're going to party out. Is that all right? Now, Father God, unto him who was a... Oh, hang on. Hang on. I done forgot to take up the offering. I done forgot to look. I done forgot to tell y'all. I get excited when I see the Lord move. You hear my wife over there telling me, calm down? Hey, y'all, they done put me out the Baptist church. I'm telling you. They'd have kicked me straight out the Methodist church, the Baptist church. they get him out of here. He's crazy. Amen. Let's get a seat in our hand. And while we're doing that, amen, look, we just, look, we just want to kick it with you. So right after service, right, we got some refreshments downstairs for you. We just want everybody to come downstairs and let's just hang out, okay? I know you might be in a hurry to go somewhere. Look, we got some refreshments. We got a little something to eat. And you know what I'm saying? So just kind of, let's just hang out, okay? Can we just be family? Is that all right? All right, let's get a seed in our hand. All right, let me have some giving music. I'm not going to make an apology for my excitement no more. Y'all just don't know. Shoot. From the bando to the, to the house of God, shoot. I'm going to give him glory. Follow the directions of our greeters. Hallelujah. There we go. Where my dancers at? Any dancers? Come on, come on, come on, turn it up. How they doing it? There it is. When you're walking around, acting like you don't know what to do. Come on! Now you're living large, acting like the Lord never brought you through. Well, don't you come around here, trying to act all brand new. <laughs> come on, they get loose, y'all. Feeling like you're just a dude, yeah. Yes, sir! Well, what you used to do? When the spirit of the Lord comes in. Girl, girl. Oh, I really wanna dance to your feet. 
show me what you got. I wanna see you dance as soon as the beat drop. It's the whole night goes by, you know it don't stop. Make it jump. Now let me see you move. Spread your feet apart, move your body over. Clap your hands, then shake your shoulders. We gon' dance until the party's over. Come on now, then put your hands up. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is already at work in us. To the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power hence now and forevermore. And the church said... All right, keep celebrating.